cylindrical barrel with a diameter of two feet contains collected rainwater, as shown in the figure above. The water drains out through a valve not shown at the bottom of the barrel. The rate of change of the height h of the water in the barrel with respect to time t is modeled by this function, where h is measured in feet and t is measured in seconds. Volume v of a cylinder with radius r and height h is v equals pi r squared h. So let's look at a, if I can scroll. Find the rate of change of the volume of the water in the barrel with respect to time when the height of the water is four feet. So let's go, let's scroll up here. How about right there? So letter A, and I find the rate of change of the volume of the water. So dV dt is equal to the question. Uh, when the height of the water is four feet, when height of the water is four feet, indicate units of measurement. Now in this, in the volume equation right here, the radius is always one. So when we fill up with water, the radius is always one, as opposed to if you had a cone, as we fill up, the radius is getting bigger. So since R is not changing, we can plug the radius in right away. And the radius is one. The diameter is two, radius is one. So we can write V is equal to pi times one squared times H. So the volume is just pi H. So dV dt is equal to pi dH dt. Well, we know that d, let's see, we want dV dt. This is equal to pi times, and then we'll plug 4 in for that H. Oh, no, excuse me. Uh, we want to plug it into here, right here. 4 in for that H right there, because it's dH dt. All right, so negative one-tenth times the square root of four, which is two, two fifths, or two tenths, one fifth. So negative pi over five, and the label would be feet cubed per, per what, per second. Letter B, when the height of the water is three feet, let will see, when the height, height, Height is three feet. Is the rate of change of the height of the water with respect to time increasing or decreasing? So we want the the change in the rate. So we want rate of change. We want to know how that's changing. So we need second derivative. So d2h over dt second is equal to, well, this is negative one tenth, negative one fifth hitting the eraser, negative one-tenth h to the one-half. So we need negative one over 20, so negative one over 20, and then times uh, h to the negative one-half, but then times dh dt. Now that's equal to negative one over 20, square root of h, times negative one over 10, square root of h. So it ends up being 1 over 200 because the square root of h's cancel out, which is greater than 0, so increasing. At time t equals 0 seconds, the height of the water is 5 feet. Use separation of variables to find an expression, h in terms of t. All right, so let's do this. Let's go, uh, I'm looking at, this equation up here. So 1 over square root of h dh is equal to negative 1 over 10 uh, dt. dt. So we have to integrate this, which is uh, h to the negative 1 half. So h uh, to the 1 half, but then times 2. That's on the left side, the negative 1 over 10 t plus c. Now they tell us that um, h is five when t is zero plus c. So c ends up being two square root of five. So we have two square root of h is equal to negative one tenth t plus two square root of five. So square root of h is equal to negative one twentieth t plus square root of five. So h is equal to all of this squared.
And here's the rubric if you'd like to take a look. The inside of a funnel of height 10 inches has circular cross sections as shown in the figure above. At height h, the radius of the funnel is given by r equals 1 20th times 3 plus h squared, uh, where uh, h is between 0 and 10. The units of r and h are inches. And the average value of the radius of the funnel. So letter a, the average value of a function is 1 over b minus a, so 10 minus 0 integral from 0 to 10 of uh, 1 over 20, 3 plus h squared dh. So that'd be uh, 1 over 200 if we pull out the 1 20th, 0 to 10, of just 3 plus h squared dh. And I assume you know how to take the integral of a polynomial. Find the volume of the funnel. Well, all of these are... Um, all these cross sections are circles. So if we add up all the circles, add up all the area of the circles, then we end up with volume. So now since all of these are circles, we're gonna go from zero to 10 of pi r squared dh. And the reason it's dh is because the radius is in terms of h. So we have pi integral from zero to 10 of um, 1 20th, 3 plus h squared, and then all of that, I keep hitting the, the erase button, squared, dh. So we could have like pi over 400, because 20 squared is 400, 0 to 10, and then we can FOIL this right here, which is 9 plus 6h squared plus h to the fourth dh, and we end up with a polynomial. I assume you can do the integral of a polynomial, and I'll show the answer in the end anyway. The funnel contains liquid that is draining from the bottom. At the instant when the height of the liquid is three inches, the radius of the surface of the liquid is decreasing at a rate of one-fifth uh, inch per second. So let's go, uh, let's go h is equal to three. And this, let's see, the radius of the surface is decreasing. The radius, dr dt, is equal to negative one-fifth. At this instant, what is the rate of change of the height of the liquid with respect to time? What is the change of the height? So the h dt is equal to question. Well, the only thing we have is this right here. So dr dt is equal to, well, if we take the derivative of 3 20ths, that's just 0. And then if we multiply that times 1 20th, that's going to be one tenth h dh dt. So dr dt is said to be negative one fifth. This is one tenth h is three, and then we have dh dt. So I just need to multiply this by ten thirds. So it ends up being dh dt is equal to negative two thirds. And here's the rubric with all that antiderivative worked out, all the integrals worked out. If f of x equals cosine squared, let's do the derivative. So we have 2 cosine of 3x minus 5 times negative sine of 3x minus 5. And then times the derivative of the inside of that is 3. So 2 times negative times 3 is negative 6. So it's got to be letter D. Here we can change this to 1 over, let's see, t to the 2 halves and times t to the 1 half is t to the 3 halves dt. But that's like taking the integral of t to the negative 3 halves. So if we add 1 to this, we get t to the negative 1 half, but then times negative 2 plus c. So letter A. Position of particle moving the xy plane is given by that vector, or y is the twice differentiable function of t at time t equals one half. What is the acceleration vector of the particle? Well, the velocity vector is 12t squared and 2y prime of 2t. And then the acceleration vector is 24t and uh, 4y double prime of 2t.
Now we're going to evaluate this when t is equal to one half. And so we get 12 comma, the, the best we can do is the second derivative of half of two is one. And that ends up being letter D. What number does the series converge? This is a geometric series. If you plug zero in for K, you get one and then minus E over pi and then plus E squared over pi squared and so on. So A sub one is equal to one and then the R is equal to negative E over pi. So the sum is equal to one over one minus R, but that'd be one plus E over pi. So really, I think the choices right now are probably these two, and they've gotten rid of the complex fraction. So we're gonna multiply the top and bottom by pi. So we get pi over pi plus E, pi over pi plus E ends up being C. The number of students in a cafeteria is modeled by the function P that satisfies the logistic differential equation where t is time in seconds and p of zero is 25, what is the greatest rate of change in students per second for the number of students in the cafeteria? So this piece is exponential. And then we have a limiting factor. So once the population reaches 200, the rate is gonna end up being zero. So the maximum population is 200 and the fastest rate of that population is when the population is 100, when it's half of the carrying capacity. So dp dt is the greatest when P is 100. So we'll put a 100 here, and 200 minus 100 is 100. So you end up with 10,000 over 2,000. Those cancel, and we're left with five. A cube with edges of length x centimeters has a volume V of x to the third cubic centimeters. The volume is increasing at a constant rate of 40 cubic centimeters per minute, the volume, so D, dv dt is equal to 40. At the instant when x is equal to 2, what is the rate of change of x? So what is dx dt in centimeters per minute with respect to time? <laughs> so dv dt is equal to 3x squared dx dt. 40 is equal to 3 times 4 times dx dt. So we need 40 over 12, that's 10 thirds. That's letter A. Let S be the region in the first quadrant bounded above by the graph of the polar curve R equals cosine. So up here is cosine of theta and bounded below by the graph of the polar curve R equals two theta. So this one's two theta. As shown in the figure above, the two curves intersect when theta is 0 0.450. So that's the intersection point. What is the area of S? Well, the area of a polar curve is one half integral from A to B of R squared D theta. So we need to get this area up here, or down there, I suppose, is one half integral from zero to 0 0.450 of four theta squared D theta, because we're gonna square that R, plus one half integral from, now we're looking at, the circle. And so we start here, and we work our way until we get to pi over two. So we have 0.450 to pi over two of cosine squared theta d theta. Plug that into the calculator and it ends up being letter B.